quality service and expertise has earned them a fine reputation. That's Herrick Services, on the air, because they care. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother will be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Doren. God bless you. You can get diesel anywhere, but what about atomic diesel? That comes from Stern. Atomic diesel is your solution to all your cold weather problems. Prevent clogged fuel filters, increase your fuel economy, and save money with Atomic Diesel. Contact Roger at Stern today by calling 1-800-477-2744 to see how Atomic Diesel and the rest of their line of fuels and lubricants can keep your operation running at max capacity. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course, they have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at The Chocolate Season, 40th and Old Ginny, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. Big box stores are tempting for buying equipment for your high schooler in sports or for yourself in your sports leisures. But buying new is awfully expensive. Why not go somewhere with new and used options? Play It Against Sports is quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And it's more than baseball, softball, and golf. They also have equipment for disc golf, fitness, hockey, and more. Plus, they're always buying products. Bring your gear you're done with and get trade money on the spot. Play it against sports at 48th and Vine. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to acquire 402 402- 560-6197. Ready to upgrade your combine in 2024? The team at Landmark Implement is here to help you find the right combine to fit your operations needs. Choose from 4.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver, followed by John Deere financial rates with approved credit through the end of March. When you purchase a pre-owned S or X series combine from Landmark, know you are backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network with mobile techs and parts drop-off points to keep you up and running. View our current inventory online at LandmarkImp.com or stop by your local Landmark to experience the Landmark difference. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. This is Sunday Rewind. Take it back now, y'all. Hang down, flip it every person. If I could turn back time. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now, here are your hosts, Tom Stevens and Mike Melby. <laughs> As he finishes up a tweet, good afternoon, happy Selection Sunday, happy St. Patrick's Day. My name is Mike Melby, Tom Stevens is off today, he was up in Minnesota at the Target Center watching the Big Ten Tournament, got to see him and Heidi on the uh, the television over the course of the weekend. Jake Bachoven joins me on the show here on That's Husker right. Rewind, as well as the co-host of On the Block with Strick and Austin, nine-year NBA veteran, Mr. Eric Strickland. Stricky, how are you? Good, man. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Illinois for winning the Big Ten. Just that game just going off. It was a great game there. I'm doing great, man. It's, uh, it's a wonderful day. This is going to be a wonderful time because – you're going to hear Nebraska's name called for the first time in a long time, and so that's a beautiful thing for today. That it is. Uh, Northwestern has been the first Big Ten team that's been announced. They're a nine seed. They'll take on eight seed Florida to, Florida Atlantic, and it looks like UConn and Stetson is the first 116 seed. The East region is what they're revealing, which will be the Omaha 
pairing with the what is it the eight nine and the the two fifteen uh, or seven ten and two fifteen coming up here at the bottom part of this bracket. So that should be interesting. Uh, Strick, do you think we're going to wind up at eight like everybody else does? A lot of, yeah, I, I think I think if they would have gotten uh, the win and went to the finals, I thought they possibly could have got a six seven C. But yeah, I think I think they're going to probably fall around that area. It's going to be very similar to Northwestern. They'll probably get an eight. Um, and um, being that um, I, I don't think they'll be out in the Omaha region potentially, but I think they'll uh, they'll most likely maybe go in the West somewhere or something like that, or, or in the East, they possibly could and go out to Charlotte. That would be interesting. Now, how about if Iowa state becomes a one seed and then their eight, nine matchup in the second round is the winner of Nebraska, Texas A&M. How would that be? Man, that'd be crazy. I'm sure that would be uh, an emotional time for Fred Hoiberg. Um, I've, I've reffed and, and, and kind of talked to and had some great conversations with, with some of those young men, um, you know, down at Texas A&M. So uh, they're a high-flying team. Uh, they get after it a little bit. So that would be a great matchup. Um, I ain't going to lie to you. I, I definitely would have loved to have gotten that Northwestern matchup. I think that would have been a really good matchup for Nebraska, especially in the first game. Because, because um, sometimes where, where we struggle is we struggle with really good point guard play. And so hopefully, uh, and that's what Texas A&M has with uh, Wade, Wade Fourth. He's a very good point guard. He's, he's very creative. So um, if that's the matchup, then unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, but that's, that's going to be something they're going to have to uh, deal with. A little bit steeper hill to climb. Illinois, the second Big Ten team to be announced. They are a three seed in the East. They're going to take on 14th seed Moorhead State. That will be in Omaha. So the, uh, the Omaha bracket, the 215 is going to pop up next. Uh, Washington State Drake is the 7-10 matchup. BYU Duquesne, the 6-11. And Iowa State, as predicted by a lot of people, the number two seed that will play in Omaha. I thought they might make their way up into a one seed, but they are going to be a two. Yeah, yeah. Bach, man, what you think, man? What you think about what you're seeing so far? Well, I love it. I love the fact that Drake is in is in Omaha uh, because they've got the Devries uh, connection there with, with Dan, Dan and Darian. So that will be fun. Potentially a, a team that people could cheer for. I want to see the, the Omaha reaction to Illinois <laughs> because I know a lot of people are pretty upset uh, with the, the game the other day with a lot of the foul calls. If you saw the game today with Illinois, Terrence Shannon is pretty good at just drawing fouls in general. So he, he did that all together. But um, just watching the Omaha region come together. Can't lie. I had a little bit of hope that Nebraska would be the seventh seed in that one. Uh, didn't end up playing out that way. So we'll have to wait and see where, ne where Nebraska is. But um, so far, it looks like a pretty interesting draw again for, for, for Omaha. You got Illinois, you got Drake, you got Iowa State. A lot of like, kind of like local flavor and interest, I think, so far. Well, well, what's crazy is he, he was looking very James Harden-ish back in like two two sixteen uh, time frame. <laughs> And uh, he, everything he was doing, he was just getting the, the benefit of the doubt. And you're absolutely right. I think uh, Nebraska, they were they were very aggressive in the same manner, just wasn't getting the same call. And, uh, well, that, that, you know, Mass disappeared in the second half. Not just, You know, he had a great first half. But I, I think where he had um, a lot of a, a lot of success was taking them into the block. And I, he got away from that. And, and I think that's one of the things that hurt them coming out of the second half. It really did, and and speaking of the the not getting calls and Terrence Shannon getting them for the tournament, Terrence Shannon had 44 of Illinois' 88 free throw attempts, and their opponents had 69 free throw attempts. Uh, I, I believe it was Mike Schaefer who just tweeted out that uh, the referees should be on the uh, Big Ten tournament all tournament team. Uh, but that's kind of an interesting stat that one player with a team that took 88 total free throw attempts in in a three game you know series. Uh, you know, when you think of do the math there, that's that's twenty nine point three per game. And you had one guy taking half of those. They got Absolutely. Nebraska up on the screen here. What a blessing. That's yeah, it's been a long time since we've seen something like that. <laughs> Nebraska lying in wait, waiting for their name to be called. But that's good. They've got cameras in there and uh, giving a shout out to Nebraska. Heck, yeah. No, we uh, Bach pointed that out here a moment ago. So right before we went on the air, uh, Strick, well, let's let's kind of go back and touch a little bit on, first of all, Friday night's game. Uh, against Indiana, the, the K-State show was in full display, but it wasn't just that. It, there, I mean, it was just, it was, you know, what the, uh, Bryce Williams, Jamarcus Lawrence, 
Um, Juwan Gary, everybody did their part on Friday night against Indiana, which I believe is going to be the team that we see in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That's not coming off of, you know, 15 hours between games, but, uh, what were your thoughts coming out of Friday night? Well, I, I think coming out of Friday, um, it, it was true to form. One of the things and, and the success that they've had against, uh, that team was that Bryce, and Kese had great success against them in, in the regular season as well. And it, and it continued in that manner. They both had great nights, over 20 points for both of them. Um, what you wanted to see against Illinois is you needed to see the consistency of them, both Bryce and Kese, which they didn't have. I mean, Terrence Shannon Jr. not only did a good job of scoring like crazy, he did a wonderful job of playing defense with his size and his quickness. And his physicalness against Kese. I mean, Kese was able to get some things off and, and so forth and so on, but it wasn't a consistency that you would have hoped to have had. This is what happened in the second half. Um, I don't. I think Bryce could have been a little bit more aggressive. We didn't get that. And then what you need is you need those two to have consistency. This is where they're going to get success in the in the tournament. Is you got to have those two with some form of consistency. They don't have to go nuts. Don't have to go crazy. Just some form of consistency. Good shooting numbers you know, in that 45, 50 range, just consistent shots, getting to the free throw line, taking good shots. And then you need that third person. I don't care if it's Jamarcus. I don't care if it's Mass. You need that that third person to have a step-up game, which you saw flashes of it, but it wasn't a continuation. And that's why they ended up coming up short because just wasn't able to get it done in the second half. Yeah, and the, uh, the difference between Bryce Williams on Friday and – Casey Tomanaga and the way they got their points, you almost didn't even realize that Bryce Williams scored. <laughs> then you have Casey. Um, the way they play the game is so different, but it fits both of them so well. The joy that Casey plays with, uh, you know, egging on the crowd. And, and I mean, he'd be tough to, to be a, a fan of a team that played against him. Uh, but then Bryce Williams is a guy that just, whether things are going great or bad, he has that Fred Hoiberg mentality of just even keel. Uh, great. I just hit a big three. It, you know, we helped us on a run, but we got to get back and play D. You know, there's there's no, you know, gestures and and hands out as he's running back up the floor. But uh, both of them that they just mesh together so well. Yeah, uh, they do. And and look, they're, they're going to get another opportunity at it. They're going to get a little bit of time to rest and recover. We don't know what happened with CJ in this game, but uh, they're going to get back and they just got to get back to execution. We saw that they kind of started getting into I've got to make a play I've got to get a make a play mentality they've got to stay away from that part of it especially in play in in, in the uh, tournament just stay and execute and run your stuff and and the shots will come they'll present themselves well absolutely and it was and it was kind of case more than anybody but if there's one guy that you're like you know what I'm probably okay with him taking some of those shots on trying to force the action at him um, if he would get the calls like Terrence Shannon would get the calls, I think he could have gotten to the line probably three or four more times than he did. But, you know, that was not the case. And some say that uh, Nebraska is clapping and they are an eight seed. They will take on Houston in the second round after they knock off Texas A&M. You knew they were going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like yeah. it's going to be. It's going to be a, a matchup of the SEC against the uh, the Big Ten. And and like I said, Texas A&M, they're, they're going to run. They're going to they're going to attack and they've got great guard play. So Nebraska is going to have to be uh, definitely on point and how they guard. Uh, but I think they can get it done. Yeah. Of the potential nine seeds that Nebraska could have faced, uh, as you pointed out earlier, based on point guard play, I think this is probably the toughest matchup that they have. Uh, that they could have gotten. So uh, we'll, we'll see, though. It's not like they're not playing great basketball right now, uh, aside from a, fati a fatigue-filled last 17 minutes uh, yesterday. But uh, Nebraska, 23-10 and 10 versus 20-14 and 14, Texas A&M, the new home of uh, Mr. Trev Alberts. So uh, it, the, the fun thing, Strick, have you noticed every year there is some kind of a matchup, uh, whether it's in the first round or the second round, that it seems like the committee – kind of did it on purpose with a little bit of, of drama <laughs> centered around it. That's very possible. That's very possible that they could be looking at that. Uh, the game is going to be in Memphis though. And, and so, um, you know, Memphis isn't too bad of a, of a trip. I mean, no. hopefully uh, Nebraskans will get out there and get an opportunity to, to take a look at them uh, on the road 
you know, but, but it's going to be interesting to see. Um, look, uh, Houston is beatable. I mean, you saw what I, Iowa I State did to them. I think they're very beatable. I, you know, you 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 can catch a, a flyer and a burner on them, and it's it's very possible that you can get them. And Wisconsin's going to be a five seed in Memphis as well. Now, to me, that's really interesting that you put two Big Ten teams that close to each other in the bracket. But Nebraska, the eight, Wisconsin, the five, and they will be in Memphis. And Nebraska is going to play on Thursday next week, and Wisconsin will play on Friday. So four Big Ten teams are in Illinois, Nebraska, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. And as expected, uh, I believe we will see Michigan State uh, wind up being chosen. And, of course, Purdue more than likely will be the one seed in the Midwest. Uh, and that should round out the, the Big Ten's bids. Do you think there's any shot that Ohio State gets in? Ah, it's going to be really close. I mean, it's, if so, it could be similar to what happened with Indiana. La, um, was it last year? Uh, where they end up with that that last four in, they've been hot. They're one of the hottest teams that that uh, coming into the tournament. It's very possible that they can land in that that uh, last four in uh, situation where they they're either the uh, 16 seed trying to play their way into the tournament. Very very possible. Bach, your thoughts on Nebraska A and M? Well, wow. I mean, I mean that's exactly <laughs> what I think we all kind of wanted. I guess <laughs> as, as much drama as we can get here. Uh, if you were tired of the Trev Alberts talk, get ready for a whole nother week of it. Um, very, I mean, incredibly interesting as far as on the court. Um, you know, this is a team that's very hot and is coming off scoring quite a bit of points there at the SEC tournament. Had an 18 point lead on Florida that they let uh, kind of disappear. Nebraska kind of been through that as well against Illinois. Um, but it's a team that shoots 28% from beyond the arc. And so in my mind, especially with Nebraska, I mean, we know it. We saw it in the last couple games, actually. One they won against Indiana, one they lost against Illinois. If they can get going, that could be a lot of trouble for, for A&M. Um, but you don't you don't kind of want this Jekyll and Hyde type of thing um, because, you know, again, it, it worked against Indiana, but Illinois was able to have enough firepower to get back. Um, I think it's I think it's a, it's it's a fine enough matchup. They've got two guys that score in double figures, so you can kind of you know really as your scout your scouting report goes as you get ready for this game, kind of focus in on those guys. But um, so I I feel pretty good about it. Uh, and then you look at the bracket altogether: a, a shot at Houston, maybe Duke or Wisconsin there in the Sweet Sixteen. Um, it, it it it's fun. I mean, this is fun. Yes, All I can is. say is this is fun because like, this is the second time since Danny knee that Nebraska has been in the NCAA tournament. And we can kind of now picture it, go through our different, uh, our different mindsets. And then for a lot of people too, uh, planning on uh, visiting Memphis. We'll see what, what the, the city of Memphis has in store for Oscar fans. And I misspoke a moment ago. I thought Nebraska was playing on Thursday. They were playing Friday. So Nebraska gets an extra day of rest. I think that is actually very, very important for both CJ Wilcher to make sure he's hundred percent over the illness and for Josiah Alec. I said uh, in an interview yesterday, there's no structural damage with the knee, but it is still pretty sore after uh, Terrence Shannon went flying out of control as he did most of the game. And then Alec got the foul, but uh, sounds like that extra day of rest, I think is going to come in beneficial for both of those guys. Strick, think yeah. back to your playing days, man. What was it like in March? Um, you know, going through the, the, the grind when you're getting into February and into March and you're playing, you're on the bubble, you know, you're going to get in. Uh, you know, you're going to go play in the NIT. What are you going to do? Um, how was that ebb and flow for you through your career at Nebraska? I mean, it, it, it's a very exciting time. Uh, it can be nerve wracking. And then again, it, it also depends on what you had, what type of energy you had to expend during that tournament. And then going into a, a Thursday as opposed to a Friday. I mean, you you always would love to get that extra day. I mean, you're you're literally in some instances, like if you're Wisconsin, I mean, it's it's tough that if, if you have to turn around and play on a Thursday, not only you don't, you have short practice, you still got to you hope to get a recovery day. You're dealing with the emotions of it. It's not, it's not a big turnaround. You would love to hit that Friday day, that Friday. And then depending on where you have to go and where you have to travel to, and those things sometimes can matter, but it is very emotional. It's fun. You, you're excited. You're looking forward to it all. And you are just hoping that you're able to, to, to catch fire and, and be hot at the right time. The NCAA tournament seems to be so much about matchups. And in your freshman and sophomore years, you guys wind up in the NCAA tournament. And the matchup against New Mexico State, I did not think was great. 
um, for you guys. And the pen game, you know, I kind of want to reminisce a little bit with you about those. Walk me through the the prep and everything going into both of those games uh, in the first round back in, uh, uh, what was it, 92, 93, and 93, 94. You, you say, take, what was the question? 92, 93, you guys took on New Mexico State. Yeah. Uh, and then in 93, 94, Penn in the first round of the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Uh, what was it like leading up to those games, and and where do you think uh, you guys you know could have done things a little differently to pull out a W? Well, against New Mexico State, listen, uh, I, I don't think we we were uh, ready for uh, a lot of their athleticism. They had a really small point guard, just really shifty, and just was it was just, they, it was like Lob City. It felt like the the Clippers with Br- Blake Griffin and that crew. I mean, they they just were. Uh, anytime we played zone, they just had something for everything that we we threw at them, and and, and we just didn't play uh, up to to par at them. Now, Penn is the game I thought we should have went, we should have won. Um, it, it was one of those things where Pike just didn't play well, and you know we were there, but we you know if Pike if Pike plays well in that game, I think you know because obviously he was the leader and he was going to take most of the, more of the shots and. And most of us, if he plays well, I think we win that game. Um, you know, they had two guys, Maloney, and I can't remember the other guard, but they they had great guard play. And in in the in the tournament, man, I don't I don't care what anybody says. You can just look at uh, Michigan State last year when they made their run. It's really from guard play. You get good guard play in the in in the uh, the tournament, and you can do some things, and you can go uh, quite a ways. I mean, What's just look at Kansas State last year. With, oh, exactly. You know, the run that they made. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you, it's, it, if you get good guard play at the right time, I mean, you really can do some things in the tournament. Was it Jerome Allen? Was he the other uh, guard from? Yeah, the- Jerome Allen. Jerome Allen. Yeah, yep. talented, yep. talented young man. Yeah, that was a game. That was like th- their their backdoor sets. Uh, that yeah. backdoor cut was just something that that uh, I know you guys couldn't figure out. But uh, uh, regardless, I it's, like I said, it kind of one of those uh, you know sit back and reminisce a little bit. Uh, obviously, 95, 96, you guys had the losing streak. Uh, things went sideways. Honestly, that team, I wish they could have gotten it to be like that last four in. Um, you know, if they had the play in games in 95, 96, I think Nebraska gets in and does some damage. Um, you guys really had started to figure it out after, mm-hmm. you know, everything kind of got settled uh, with with everybody and everybody focused on on doing their job. And you guys did it so well uh, to, to go on to the NIT championship that year. Hey, Mike, I actually, I actually would agree with you. I don't think um, there was probably anybody in the country in that last, that late part of the uh, season that would have wanted to play us. Um, uh, I, there's one situation that I really feel bad for, and I just need to shout this out because I really feel bad for the young man that uh, the Kent State game, where mm-hmm. they they get a, I think a lob dunk or a tip in dunk, and they go up by one, and and the they throw the ball in. I think it's like about four, four and a half seconds left, five seconds left. And the guy goes and fouls. And I was just like, I mean, you're you're I, I think they might have been an eight seed or or they were not a very good high seed. I mean, they were down and they were playing against the two seed. And you go up one with about five seconds and a prayer. They go to the free throw line, make two. You can't make anything on the end. I feel bad for that young man because just the emotions he's going to feel. Uh, that's very similar to probably how Chris Weber felt when, mm-hmm. you know, he drove down. They didn't have any timeouts and he calls a timeout. I mean, that's the feeling that that you carry with that for, you know, years is, is going to be tough because that's that's something that literally cost your team the game and it didn't have to happen. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is, um, and I'm reading through some comments too from um, that we're seeing on Twitter right now with the matchup between uh, Nebraska and A and M. Uh, basically, the selection committee crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> is Trev Albert's going to be in the building? I mean, that's right. We, we gotta think. Right. You think so? He's got to yeah, be. He will be. He's got to be. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, and it's it's fine. Or I think it's funny that, too that Nebraska fans seem to to the reactions I'm seeing seem to really like this matchup uh, just for the sheer uh, irony and drama that's going to take place over the course of the next six days, five days leading up to it. Uh, but it's going to be a fantastic time. Strick, you got time to stick around for a couple more minutes and we'll, we'll catch up with you here on the other side of the, uh, the break and talk a little bit about what we think 
with the matchup with A&M and then potentially Houston? Uh, I'll be in the car, but I'll, uh, yeah, I have a previous event I need to attend to at six, oh. but, uh, I probably can hang around just, just, just briefly. In the we car. do it. We do have Austin in the wings. If we, oh we, yeah. We, Austin is Austin. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we'll let you go get, go take care of, uh, of your prior commitment, man. Greatly appreciate you coming on and joining us here on selection no Sunday doubt. here on 93, seven, the ticket. All right. All right. Thanks Strick. And we will be back with more on Husker rewind right after this. People always ask, what are Jake and Sip like when they're off the air? Well, the answer probably won't surprise you. Hey, Jake, your Honda's looking a little dirty. Says the guy whose license plate is barely visible. I mean, do you even care about that thing anymore? It gets a little uncomfortable. Now, that's when I jump in. Hey, whoa, Mark, did you get a new car? Nope, just took my car down to Nebraska Auto Detail. Joe and the staff made the outside and the inside look amazing. Maybe you guys need to go. Okay, wise guy. Settle down, Jake. Book your appointment today at NebraskaAutoDetail.com. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They can get you into a new vehicle right now and get your 2024 started off the right way. They cleared off their 2023 inventory and have tons of new vehicles to choose from to make sure you get to where you need to be this year. Out with the old and in with the new. Stop by Mullen Motors today, just north of 48th and Layton in Lincoln. No tagline, just quality vehicles. Mullen Motors. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. The last few years have been wild, but we've been here for you through all the ups and downs and we'll be here for you when you need us the most. For all your travels and for your day-to-day driving. With winter conditions causing problems all over town, the last thing anyone needs this year is constant car troubles. Let us help you drive in peace and make sure you drive to work and to winter destinations safe. A1 Automotive, Leviton L Street downtown, always honest answers. At Allo, we believe in the exceptional. From extraordinary whole home coverage to super fast speeds, our local teams are always on hand to make sure your service is running at top performance. Let go of lag, banish buffering, and enjoy outstanding service throughout your entire home. We believe in delivering nothing less than exceptional service, so that's exactly what we do. Visit us at allofiber.com to experience the exceptional. Big box stores are tempting for buying equipment for your high schooler in sports or for yourself in your sports leisures. But buying new is awfully expensive. Why not go somewhere with new and used options? Play It Again Sports is quality, slightly to gently used equipment. And 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And it's more than baseball, softball, and golf. They also have equipment for disc golf, fitness, hockey, and more. Plus, they're always buying products. Bring your gear you're done with and get trade money on the spot. Play it again sports at 48th and Vine. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Gainet Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gainet Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gainet Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gainet Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric brings exciting career opportunities for you or someone you know. They are now hiring plumbers, electricians, and HVAC techs and installers to continually build their professional team. They offer competitive pay and full benefits packages that include health, dental, vision, PTO, and 401k options. Action has created a positive team environment for over 50 years. Apply online 
at actionlincoln.com. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company, where problems meet solvers. At Southeast Community College, community is our middle name. Our continuing education classes offer personal interest, traffic safety and licensing, online learning, and adult education classes across Southeast Nebraska or online in your own home. Learn pottery or floral design, take a computer course, learn Spanish, how to start writing a book, or Air Fryer 101. See the full schedule of continuing education classes online at southeast.edu slash continuing SCC, your path to possible. This is Sunday Rewind on 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. <laughs> and welcome back to Husker Rewind. Jake Bachoven sitting in for Tom Stevens today. I'm Mike Melby. Big thanks to Eric Strickland who joined us on the stream in the first segment. And now Nick Center has jumped in as well. It is Selection Sunday, it is St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. May you all have awesome Rubens today and green beer. And you have tomorrow off if you're going to partake in a lot of the green beer. Uh, And uh, don't tell me that the people on the NCAA tournament, men's basketball selection committee, do not have a sense of humor. Uh, This just tweeted out less than uh, two minutes ago by Trev Alberts. By the way, you know who Trev is? He's the athletic director at the University of Nebraska. That's right. He's the athletic director at the University of Texas A&M. And Trev just tweeted, well, this will be fun with a crying, laughing face. Congratulations, Coach Hoiberg and Coach Williams. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Uh, Nick, thoughts? Well, I I like, I mean, obviously never going to complain about uh, Nebraska being in the uh, the big dance, right? It's, It's a celebration. Uh, it's a celebratory day. Um, I will say this, and I told you guys uh, at the, when we walked when I walked in, A and M's playing some really really good basketball right now. So is Nebraska. They'd won five in a row before yeah, they, uh, they, they surrendered did. the lead to Florida. They've they've scored over eighty points in their last four games. Uh, this is a team that also started in the season ranked inside the top twenty for sure. It might have been they they got up to twelfth as high as twelfth in the nation before. Uh, losing to FAU earlier in the year, which was, by the way, ranked 19th at that time. FAU when they when they knocked off Texas A&M. This is a this is an A&M team that over the course of the year has a couple of top 10 wins. One against Kentucky, who was sixth at one time, and then one against uh, Tennessee, who was also sixth at one time. So you look at these uh, at paper, right, and and you say, okay, Nebraska's got a couple couple of top 10 wins. Texas A&M has a couple of top 10 wins. Um, this is going to be a really, really good matchup on the floor, I think. But then guess what? I think it's also really, really fun off the floor because now we have a whole week since they play, especially on Friday to where, which is big. You'll remember last year, if I, or last time I remember, right, if I remember correctly, Nebraska played on Thursday Yeah, and it was like, all right, cool. It's, it's here. But then the way Nebraska played and, and the things that happened in Nebraska lost 74 to 60, it was like, dang, it's already over. Nebraska fans get to enjoy this one for for more, more than a day of the NCAA tournament because guess what? They don't play on Friday. True, and I'll be honest with you, as far as the number one seeds go, aside from having Purdue as the opposition in the second round, mm-hmm. I don't I don't mind Nebraska's matchup with Houston if they get by AM. Of of the other mm-hmm. number ones, I, I would rather take on Houston. So we'll yeah, see. I, I mean, Houston, we saw it against uh, Iowa State. They they got blown out. TJ Hotzelberger is a really, really good team. Uh, it, with with the Cyclones, um, but Houston's defense. I mean, a lot of defense with Houston. MSU, MSU, Mississippi State, the eight, Michigan State, the sixth and final Big Ten team in the tournament. They're going to be a nine in Charlotte, mm-hmm. and uh, they'll take on North Carolina if they get by Mississippi State. I, I like the way North Carolina plays, and I, I I think they've got a shot at going quite a ways this year. But uh, going to be interesting. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about 
what happened earlier in the week. Oh, hey, yeah, we've got Austin. Austin Orban, how are you, man? Hey, fellas. How we doing? There he is. What doing a day. Good. What oh, a is. day. I, I want to echo Nick's point about just being a day of celebration, right? We don't get this from Nebraska all the time. There'll be plenty of time to, to break down the matchup and get into that in depth. But think about the, the road to get here. Think about how long it's been since the last time Nebraska was in the NCAA tournament, the 2013-14 season. It took a decade. It was supposed to be a quick turnaround for Fred Hoiberg. It wasn't. But if you take the lens of this is essentially year 2.5, given the, the stylistic change, I would say things are on track. Given how far Nebraska dropped that first year, the way they played at the end of year three, the way they got to 500 last year. I mean, that that, sh- that could have been a tournament team if Bandamel and Gary stay healthy. Would have been super bubbly. Um, went over Purdue last year would have helped. But Nebraska's been building to this for, for a while now. So I, I want to give Fred Hoiberg and his staff credit for, you know, making this essentially a two and a half year turnaround after a year and a half or two, just kind of wandering in the desert, trying to find their way. Yeah, absolutely. And and Austin, um, what what are your thoughts on Trev having having the cojones to tweet what he did? He since deleted it. Did he really already? He's what? already deleted no. it. There was a, there was a typo. Come he on. forgot there was a typo. He, he forgot the word B. He just said this w- this will fun instead of this will mm. be fun. He said this will fun. So he deleted it. I think he then retweeted it out and forgot the word B again. <laughs> and so I don't know. I think he just know. left it. I, I like Amy just a lot. Okay. She normally doesn't miss much, and she she has oh, the screenshot. Oh, just shot. 20 seconds ago. Yeah, she okay. has the screenshot. Then. Of, well, this will be fun. It says will be fun, and uh, okay. she said it has been deleted. But uh, I, I'll, say, I'll say this. Anyone can tweet anything. If Trev's a real man, he'll show up to Memphis. That's how this happens. Anyone can hide behind a scream and type something. Show up in Memphis, yeah. Trev. That's the challenge. Yeah, I think you will. And if you have not uh, checked out the Nebraska men's basketball Twitter, uh, do so. Uh, Josiah Alec has got moves uh, with, you know, the way he plays on the court. You wouldn't be surprised by this, but uh, Josiah is is kind of dancing around at Fred's house right now. Um, no, I, I just I'll say this. I mean, I think it's I think it's a good matchup for Nebraska, right? Like um, and, and Austin, to echo your point and, and Bach and Melby, I certainly want your guys ideas on this and thoughts like you talk about the the philosophy change and the identity change. Right. And so many people and rightfully so talk about Nebraska's three point shooting, right? That's what, I mean, separated them in their, their first game against Indiana case. They Tominaga was on fire. Th- they need to figure out a way to, to score the basketball. And they're probably going to need to, uh, especially on Friday against AM, who's a really good rebounding team. But I think so much, a little bit that doesn't get talked about of Nebraska is their, their interior defense, right there. Nebraska's defense on the interior is, is really, really strong. And, and that is something that I think this week going into a game like this, where it is all or nothing. I mean, it's win or go home. You feel somewhat more sustainable this year than in years past in games like this, where whether it's a big 10 tournament game, whether it's now in this case, an NCAA tournament team game or matchup, it's like, okay, Nebraska, even if they're not shooting lights out from beyond the arc, there's other pillars of their roster and their identity that they can kind of fall back on. And one of them is defense. And it feels just like it's more sustainable. They feel like a more complete basketball team than they have in years past. Go back to the beginning of the season. Uh, everybody was asking, Hey, what's, what's the prognosis for Nebraska this year? I think Austin, I heard uh, you and Strick talking about, you know, that, that 18 and 13 is kind of the floor. Uh, and, and depending on if they make a couple mm-hmm. of shots, they get hot at the right time, they could, you know, make mm-hmm. a run, uh, et cetera. But the bottom line, and I had mentioned it on this show, is if they get to the tournament, if they get there, which I think they will, they're a team that is built to win in the tournament and have everything they need other than an an, an absolute top-shelf point guard. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to – I'll throw this out here. Nebraska's field goal percentage defense from two has been really good. They don't have a shot blocking presence. No, they mm-hmm. don't. And do they need one? Not necessarily. They've gotten away way with it. And that's where this is my one take on the matchup. Nebraska, what they allow opponents to do is they, they try to to force them into the mid range a lot. 
Nebraska does allow a lot of threes. They face some pretty good shooting teams this year and let other teams get hot. So, no, Texas A&M doesn't shoot it well. But, yes, Nebraska will allow its fair share of threes. So it wouldn't shock me if you see Nebraska live or die by the three on defense because Wade Taylor will take a lot of shots, doesn't shoot it that well from three. Tyrese Radford, who was at Virginia Tech, transferred to A&M. Doesn't take nearly as many shots, but it's really those two that are the leading scorer. They're going to want to put their heads down and get downhill. So Nebraska's rotations have to be crisp. If they don't have a shot blocker, they have to be there, hands up, wall up, make them take contested mid-ranges. And then you take your shot at winning the math game on the other end. I think Nebraska can get some stuff on, on the offensive end. But again, can Nebraska get away with trading twos from threes? Can you bait A&M into taking threes that they're not as successful at? That's going to be the cat and mouse game as I see it. It really is. Um one thing that I just noticed, and it was pointed out on Twitter, uh, excuse me, the Big East only gets three teams in. One of them is a one seed, UConn. Uh, Marquette's a two seed. Creighton is in as a three, but that's it. Seton Hall yeah. and St. John's do not get in. How how uh, shocking, I guess, is that, guys? Yeah, I, I thought I thought Seton Hall was was a, a lock. I, I thought Seton Hall was more so over over St. John's. Then St. John's won a couple of games in the Big East tournament. And uh, they had the last second. Correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. Did they have the last second win over Villanova, or was that Marquette? Uh, Marquette and Nova went to overtime. Okay, okay. So, so Marquette and Nova, yes, that's right. On the Igodaro, uh, reverse, Jones, you know, reverse yeah. call, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to Cam Jones, thank you. And then you had. So I, I thought, I don't know. St. John's had a couple of disappointing losses. They had the blowout loss. Uh, I believe it was at home against Marquette potentially um but n- nonetheless I-, I i mean the big east was was one of the better conferences in in college basketball but he- here they are like you said three teams i i am surprised that like a seton hall didn't get in the big east only at three is, is one thing i think i want to point out villanova in that group two straight years they've started to be a ranked in the top 25 and failed to make the ncaa tournament Obviously, the Duke fan in me will always go back to Carolina being the first preseason number one to miss out on the NCAA tournament. But what Villanova has failed to do post Jay Wright is a big deal. And I don't think we're talking enough about it. I think they got almost too much credit in staying on the bubble for as long as they did. Respect to the Mountain West, though. I think the committee shorted them. The Mountain West didn't show up in the tournament last year. And there's been talk for a month and a half now about six bid Mountain West. Mm -hmm. They're not going to touch that. And they're underseeded from where people thought. So that feeds into even the, the Greg Sankey comments of we have to have to take a look at how we, we view the tournament, how we seed it. I don't like it. I think teams that are playing well in the Mountain West, you know, would have deserved a shot over some of these power five teams. But you look at, you know, Oregon making a run, Colorado making a run, uh, North Carolina State making a run, A-10 bid stealer, American bid stealer. Some of these teams are just left on, on the cutting room floor because of the bid stealers. That's why we love March and why we hate March as a national college basketball perspective. Absolutely do. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick time out. Austin, you going to stick around? Uh, if you want me to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nick, yep, uh, hang I out for a little while as well. And uh, we'll wrap up the first hour of Husker Rewind. Nick Center in Jake Bachoven, Austin Orman joining me, Mike Melby. Husker Rewind returns right after this on 93.7 The Ticket. Hi, it's Tom and Mike from Husker Rewind. And did you know that people who are represented by an attorney are often compensated up to three times more than someone who is not? Friedman Law has been helping injured people for over 60 years. It's all they do. If you're ever seriously injured in an accident, call Friedman Law at 402-476-1093. Friedman Law is a family firm that works hard for Nebraska families just like yours. So if you're ever injured on the job or in a crash, contact Friedman Law at FriedmanLaw.com. It seems like just the other day I was building my first house. I've seen many changes to our building market in Lincoln. It's been a fun road. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at AspenBuildersInc.com. You know, we hear this a lot where I don't want to live in a cookie cutter home. Well, let's come up with some answers on what we're going to build, where we're going to build it, and what it's going to cost. One thing that we started doing early on was we started building neighborhoods. I'm a firm believer in character in your street and in your neighborhood. I like choice. I like variation. I like maybe something a little bit different in a neighborhood that you don't see in every neighborhood. I think it's great to have choices, it's uniqueness, and I think that's what gives a neighborhood character. And I think that's what we've done over the years. 
Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Go Pit Barbecue. It's $5.99 barbecue time. Hurry to Hogwild for a complete barbecue meal that's only $5.99. Get a one meat sandwich loaded with our award winning barbecue plus your choice of a classic side and drink for just $5.99. Upgrade your sandwich to beef brisket for just a dollar more. Join us for lunch or dinner in Lincoln at 3210 Cornhusker Highway. Order online at gohogwild.com. But don't be late, we close at eight. Spring is on its way. Are you prepared to keep the grass greener on your side? Blades Lawn and Landscape has a position opened at a homeowner association to their client list with residential and commercial openings also. Transform your yard into a private oasis with the professional services offered by Blades Lawn and Landscape, including landscape walls and beds and a five-step fertilizer program applied by a licensed professional. Call them today at 402-730-6320 or go to bladeslcc.com to schedule a free estimate on commercial or residential lawn services. People always ask, what are Jake and Sip like when they're off the air? Well, the answer probably won't surprise you. Hey, Jake, your Honda's looking a little dirty. Says the guy whose license plate is barely visible. I mean, do you even care about that thing anymore? It gets a little uncomfortable. Now, that's when I jump in. Hey, whoa, Mark, did you get a new car? Nope, just took my car down to Nebraska Auto Detail. Joe and the staff made the outside and the inside look amazing. Maybe you guys need to go. Okay, wise guy. Settle down, Jake. Book your appointment today at NebraskaAutoDetail.com. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Ready to upgrade your combine in 2024? The team at Landmark Implement is here to help you find the right combine to fit your operations needs. Choose from 4.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver, followed by John Deere financial rates with approved credit through the end of March. When you purchase a pre-owned S or X series combine from Landmark, know you are backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network with mobile techs and parts drop-off points to keep you up and running. View our current inventory online at LandmarkImp.com or stop by your local Landmark to experience the Landmark difference. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402-590-5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors and more. The captain for Sean Jackson. I said shout out to Dennis LeBlanc. I mean, if somebody's going to replace Trev that knows Nebraska, that knows the players, that knows everything going on, it's Dennis LeBlanc. Dennis LeBlanc is exactly what we need. Golly, Trev put us in a bad spot. Horrible spot. Dennis is someone who where where the the fall won't be as hard with Dennis there. Trust me. Have you been accused of a crime? Is your freedom at stake? At Liberty Law Group, we are committed to the defense of liberty for those accused. Facing the court is stressful, overwhelming, and full of uncertainty. At Liberty Law Group, we believe in treating every person with respect, compassion, and understanding. When legal troubles are keeping you up, trust Liberty Law Group to fight your battles. To learn more, call 877-42-LIBERTY. That's 877-42-LIBERTY. This is Sunday Rewind on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to Husker Rewind. I'm Mike Melby. Running the board, Jake Bachhoven on the starter Heyman stream. It is Austin Ormond, co-host of On the Block with Eric Strickland. We had Stricky on the stream in the first segment. Nick Sennert joins us as well. You can catch him weekdays uh, with the guys, AD and Raph, having a good mm-hmm. time there. Oh, yeah. And and now we added Amon Green. Amon so, Green's I mean, in there. Yeah, it gets yeah. better and better now. 
So for those of you living under a rock that uh, just crawled out to see what's going on at 440 or 548 on a, a random St. Patrick's Day Sunday, it is Selection Sunday. The Nebraska men's basketball team is in the NCAA tournament. They're an eight seed. They will take on uh, Texas A&M, who now has Nebraska's former athletic director as their athletic director. And I think everybody loves the matchup. Although on the court, all the drama aside, and I know there's already been some people that are like, man, I'm tired of talking about this enough already. Let's focus on the game. But we got to have some fun with with the, yeah. the, the fact that they put these two together. <laughs> um what direction, uh, Nick, you said you wanted to make a, a pretty good point here. I want to give you the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we're like, going to jump over to Austin. Yeah, for sure. I, I think just as as you look more at, at Texas A&M, I mean, they, they lead the country in offensive rebounding percentage. Um, and, and as you saw on, what day was it, Saturday, uh, in, in Nebraska versus Illinois, like this can't be a game where Rink Mass and or Josiah Alec deal with foul trouble early. Nebraska can't afford it. Um, they're they're going to need a guy like Jawan Gary to not be dealing with foul trouble like he did on Saturday. Because if if Rink and Josiah are doing their part in their matchups, well, this is a, a, a potential game for like a Jawan Gary to grab seven, eight rebounds for, for Nebraska. And and we will talk all week long about how important guard play is in the NCAA tournament. Nebraska's guard play over the last couple of weeks has been pretty good. Bryce Williams has been really good. Um, he, he, at times earlier in the season, could get lazy with some of his passes. There was the the one game against, I want to say it was Wisconsin, where, he, I mean, there was there was back-to-back turnovers on just lazy passes near the midcourt line. Like, things like that can't happen, and they haven't happened over the last couple of weeks. So, so one w- w- the point I certainly wanted to make was, you can't have Rink Mass and, and Josiah Alec be in foul trouble in the first half. You, you, don't, you don't want them to be sitting down with two fouls with nine minutes left in the first half and, and asking Matar uh, Jope to do a lot, right? And, and so we saw that kind of come to fruition yesterday and with that Juwan Gary. Conversely, this is a game where Nebraska and, and a guy like Juwan Gary or even Bryce Williams, it, if the three-pointer isn't effective, you go right at the big guys, right? Try try to get A&M into some foul trouble um, and, and maybe not settle so much for, for a mid-range jumper or a long two. I think things like that could certainly turn the tide of, of a game like this where you have a really good offensive rebounding team, just rebounding team in general in AM. Austin, your thoughts on the matchup? Uh, obviously, three point shooting for AM is not great, uh, but man, rebounding wise, just in case you did not know, they had 587 offensive boards this year Woo. compared to 316 for Nebraska. Mm. My thoughts on the matchup are this Wade Taylor's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. He's. Uh, <sighs> I don't know how he would compare to like a Boo Booey. I think Booey's got much more of an outside game, but that's not a guy you can let get hot. Him and Radford together, they can go every other kind of Walkard and Hogard ish, uh, but they're both kind of small. So I think Bryce Williams um, in the mid post will have an advantage offensively, should rebounding wise. Um, Henry Coleman is an interesting piece to me, not just because he started his career at Duke. He's 6'7, 230. And what you need to know about him is at the time, he broke Zion Williamson's standing jump record at Duke for their freshman combine. So the, the young man can get up. He's a physical specimen. He built like a, a brick outhouse. Um, offensive rebounding is going to be interesting to watch because when I think about Nebraska's struggles, sometimes it's it's big men getting them, but a lot of them are long rebound because Nebraska does allow a lot of threes. So if AM falls into the trap of jacking threes, Nebraska's guards can't just stand there. Texas A&M has a nose for the ball. You know Buzz Williams' teams are, are going to try to to grind it out there and, and play the way their coach wants them to. So Casey Tomonaga can't stand if his man shoots it up. C.J. Wilcher, Jamarcus Lawrence absolutely cannot stand around. But this is where uh, I'll echo Nick a little bit. Rink Mass starting the game out like he did against Illinois will be huge and then stay out of foul trouble. The worst matchup for Nebraska would have been a team with a Terrence Shannon Jr., who's fast like a guard, but strong like a wing. You saw him take over because he got hot early. Nebraska had to play up on him. So then he could use his quick first step, get by him, and start playing, you know, like a running back. Texas AM doesn't have one of those guys. Their guards are smaller, their their wings don't shoot it quite as well. So what they we do well in offensive rebounding does present a problem. But the way that they play stylistically outside of that, I think, tends to be something Nebraska handles better. 
Is this something, and, and Nick, you made the, the comment off air, I believe, you know, this is a game Matar Jope cannot be needed to come in and play mm-hmm. five minutes at the end of a half, but is this a game that Matar Jope can come in and have an influence for a 90-second stretch right before a media timeout and basically tell him, go box out if, if you know whether you pick up a foul or not, but but go get rebounds. Nick or well, Austin well, Bach, anybody? I, I think I think honestly, I, on Saturday there there was one time, and Austin, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was one time where where Matar kind of you could see his youth, right? He had the one, he had the nice little isolation bucket from the short corner that was kind of funny to to watch, and it was it was a good shot, whatever. Um, there was one time he got put in in a spin cycle defensively, but I I think I mean you make a good point, Nebraska especially like this is where it hurts not having Blaze Kada. Um, even just available and and, and just be, just be, just because it's a bigger body, that's all I'm saying. Which then Austin to, to in in to follow up my my that comment, like this feels. Am I wrong in thinking this feels like a big opportunity for like Jawan to maybe play a little bit bigger and more physical than than maybe we've seen in in recent games? This is a Jawan Gary need that dog game. This is a yeah. Josiah Alec mindset game. CJ Wilcher is a bigger body because here's the thing: A and M's not huge. They're no. really not. They're aggressive is what they are. And we've seen Nebraska struggle against Duquesne a little bit against right early mm-hmm. on Northwestern where they pressed up and in Nebraska, you know, height hasn't necessarily bothered Nebraska. It's been aggressiveness because this team doesn't always want to punch back, throw the first punch. I mean, A&M has one guy in the lineup that that's taller than six, seven, and he averages mm-hmm. 1.7 points and 2.6 rebounds per game. The other guy that's 6'10", as a freshman, hasn't played. Julius Marble, the transfer from Michigan State, also hasn't seen the floor this year. It's not the size that worries me, which is where I think Josiah Alec being 6'8", 6'9", is the right size. Juwan Gary needs to bring his aggressive mindset. He's the right size to match up with Texas A&M. The Matar Joke wild card fascinates me because... I think his length and athleticism could be a game changer against smaller guards like Taylor and Radford that want to get to the rim, but they're older, they're savvy, and they could use that, that rawness, that lack of experience against him. So no, I don't think you want to see Matar Jope unless you, you know, have to break the case in case of emergency or it's late in the game, but man, there is some intriguing wildcard potential there. Well, and I think too, just to to butt in real quickly is it'll be interesting because we've, we've seen it play out is that, Fred doesn't want to play anybody with two fouls after you get your second yeah, foul in the first half. You're done. Um, that's where we saw Matar. So I think in a tournament scenario like this, you know, we, we can say, well, maybe you can get away with this or that, but you've got your core eight and you want, I mean, yeah. that's who you want to ride with. I wonder if he'd break that rule this, this to well, go around. I, and I, I think maybe in turn also is that just makes CJ Wilcher's availability just that more vital mm. or just, just for another guy that's, that's kind of trustworthy out there, right? Like CJ's an experienced guy. Um, and, and and now Nebraska's roster, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. I'm, I'm trying to go through the list of transfers. Hasn't played in an NCAA tournament. Uh, has has Bryce uh, Williams was in the CBI. Yep. Yep. Um, and, 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 and freshman. Juwan came over. With, Juwan with was, was, bit, was Alabama yeah. in the yeah. in a, in the tournament yeah. his freshman year. So yeah. okay. So I, but it's been obviously a couple of years for all these teams or for all these guys. I'm trying to like think of like rank mass at Bradley. If Bradley was like a 14 seed ever, but I, I don't think they were. Um. So I mean, I here's the thing. Like, the, I think there's probably going to be some nerves and and having experienced guys that that you trust to handle the ball i i think are going to be are, are going to be kind of important um and cj wilcher gives you that that three-point threat in addition to the rest of your guys on the roster that nebraska didn't have on saturday the the one thing the the caveat to me that stood out after the game more than anything was the frustration level with themselves and their mm-hmm. effort granted i i i have to kind of side with coach hoiberg when he's talking about man they, they literally are playing on fumes. I, I get it. It's only two games in two days, but they didn't get back to the hotel until midnight. You know, they probably didn't unwind and get to, to the point where they got sleep until two. Um, and and you, they're up early. They're going to get a quick yeah. breakfast. They're going to go through a walkthrough. Pre-game meal is going to be at 10 or 10. I mean, that was such a tight window. Uh, but guys still, they, they didn't use it as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of frustration. When Jawad Gary fouled out of that game, that told me all I needed to know about his mentality. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? He was so upset with himself. 
whether it was, you know, he felt he could have taken a step quicker than he did to try to get to the ball. I mean, it was a foul, but at the same time, uh, it, that frustration level wasn't with the officials. It was with himself. It was also an effort foul, right? Yeah, exactly. Like it was, it, he was, he was going for a, a 50, 50 ball when Nebraska <laughs> frankly needed a, a spark play. Um, I, I don't know, Austin, I, I think I, I would ask you this question, like what type of role could I, we, we talk so much about the guards and one guy we haven't mentioned yet is Jamarcus Lawrence, who's playing really, really well as of late. I, I think Nebraska's once again, it reminds me a lot of how Nebraska used Jamarcus at the end of last season mm -hmm. when everybody started to have this, man, we're really excited about Jamarcus Lawrence kind of feeling. And, and that gives Nebraska fans, I think some excitement about what it could look like on Friday and for years to come, because if they do have guys that can maybe handle the ball that's not named Jamarcus Lawrence, that makes Jamarcus a much more intriguing piece, I think, for Nebraska's offense. It sure does. I'm most curious to see how Nebraska mixes and matches on the defensive end, though. We know a and going to try to drive it Kese Tomanaga. That's what teams have tried to do all year. We've seen Kese be pretty good positionally, have good hands, but, but Taylor's quick. Radford's, you know, got a pretty good first step to him. So as much as Nebraska can not just keep Jamarcus Lawrence matched up on one of those guys, but show them different looks. Show show Taylor Bryce Williams for a couple possessions, then Jamarcus for a couple possessions. Sam Hoiberg will definitely have a role to play against those guys. That's going to be important because if you give a great player the same matchup over and over again, might take him four minutes, might take him eight, might take him 12 minutes to solve it, but he'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. Mix up the matchup, throw curveballs at him, Again, Texas a and not huge in the post. Guards win in March. But I think Nebraska should like the different looks it can throw at A&M's guards to give itself a chance to, to keep them somewhat in check. Yeah, totally agree. Austin, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we are going to go ahead me, and fellas. right now. Absolutely. We're going to have Tom Chattel in hour number two of Husker Rewind. We'll be back after this on 93.7 The Ticket. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM for 93.7 The Ticket. Cover more acres with a pre-owned sprayer or planter from Landmark Implement, your local John Deere dealer. We offer one of the area's largest selections of used sprayers, applicators, planters, and seeders. Through the month of March, take advantage of fixed rate financing as low as 3.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver. Visit your local Landmark Implement location or view our complete sprayer and seating inventory online at LandmarkImp.com and experience the Landmark difference. <gasps> the Mill Coffee and Tea, formerly with only four Lincoln locations. Guess what? What? There's five Lincoln locations now. Oh my gosh. That's 25% more Lincoln locations than there used to be. Can you even imagine a world where there's only four Lincoln Mill locations? Feels like ages ago. We were also young then. <sighs> the Mill on 11th, located right alongside 93.7 The Ticket Studios, 1040 O Street. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Hi, it's Charlie Stone back with the latest update from Andy Goodyear of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, your new car selection keeps getting better and better every month. Can you tell our listeners all about it? You know, it sure is, Charlie. It's great that our customers can come in, pick out a new Honda, and drive away with it that day. How many new Hondas do you have in stock? Well, right now we have just about 100 in stock. Hey, I hear you've won some very important awards in your service department. Tell us about them. Well, the first one is we won the award for the first fixed award. So the cars are actually fixed on the very first time they're brought in. Second award is our customer service experience award. And then our third award is our Honda Express Service Elite. And we rank the best in quality and customer satisfaction. Maybe it's time you come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road or online at HondaOfLincoln.com.
Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors, and more. Have you been accused of a crime? Is your freedom at stake? At Liberty Law Group, we are committed to the defense of liberty for those accused. Facing the court is stressful, overwhelming, and full of uncertainty. At Liberty Law Group, we believe in treating every person with respect, compassion, and understanding. When legal troubles are keeping you up, trust Liberty Law Group to fight your battles. To learn more, call 877-42-LIBERTY. That's 877-42-LIBERTY. 24-7 threat monitoring, expert tech support, streamlined communications. Allo has a solution for that. Protect your business with Allo Business. Comprehensive firewall security, Microsoft Teams voice integrated communications, cybersecurity and IT support managed by experts. From productivity to peace of mind, Allo has a solution for that. Allo means business. Protect your business by visiting allofiber.com forward slash business. Although we can't control the air we breathe outside our home, we can make a healthy difference inside. And all it takes is a call to Bryant. With healthy air options, Bryant can help you eliminate allergens, odors, and harmful chemicals, all while controlling indoor humidity levels at the same time. If it's time for a breath of fresh air inside, it's time to call Bryant. Breathe easy, breathe healthy. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. 467-1111. We do whatever it takes. In every office, there's two types of people. There are those who bring in bagels and those who eat the bagels that someone else brought in. Everybody likes the first person. Be that person first person weekday mornings at 7 30 you have a chance to win a business box of bagels from bagels and joe all you have to do is shut up simple two questions for you two for sip win and the bagels are yours lose well you don't want to lose you lost monday you lost wednesday you're a loser shut up simple weekday mornings at 7 30 brought to you by bagels and joe if you're a sewer or milford listen up Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire at 402 402- 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. This is Sunday Rewind. Take it back now, y'all. Everything down, flip it and reverse it. If I could turn back time. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now, here are your hosts, Tom Stevens and Mike Melby. Good afternoon and welcome to Husker Rewind, hour number two here on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You can join in on the Sarger Heyman text line, Honda of Lincoln Hotline, 402-464-5685. My name is Mike Melby. Tom Stevens is off today. Jake Bachhoven sitting in. Big thanks to Nick Sennert coming in studio for the last half of the first hour. Austin Orman and Eric Strickland joined us in hour number one. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Happy Selection Sunday. Nebraska will hear the uh, names of their basketball teams being called on Selection Sunday, both in the men's and women's bracket. And I'm going to make an educated guess based on all of the prognosis I've seen that the women's team will get an eight seed as well. But if you missed it, Nebraska, an eight seed in the South region, they will take on Texas A&M. Yes, 
The selection committee is awesome. Uh, Trev Alberts should be in Memphis for that game. I don't know if he'll have like a two-toned red jacket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, regardless, I don't think so. I think we know where, where he is right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, we know where he's at. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the 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 teams, there's eight teams in Memphis. You've got Houston, the one. They'll play Longwood, the 16th. Nebraska, the eight. A and M, the nine. Wisconsin, the five. James Madison, the 12. And then Duke, the four. Vermont, the 13. And Pretty interesting the way that all sets up. I think Nebraska matches up well against Houston. Uh, Nebraska scores. Houston struggles to score. And Nebraska has shown uh, the propensity to, to play some pretty salty D as well. So that could be an interesting matchup. Uh, against AM, Nebraska, Nebraska is going to have to do it on the boards. Uh, AM, the, the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Uh, Jake, I normally we kind of do a little Big Ten blitz. Um, I, pretty much everybody that has has kind of followed what's been going on here on conference tournament weekend is pretty up to speed, but I do think we can sit here and and probably go through the teams that made the tournament where they're at in the tournament and mm -hmm. how far we think we, they can go in our big 10 blitz. If that works for you. Yeah, that sounds like a fun, a fun little activity there. So from the big 10 blitz standpoint, I'm going to, um, let's just go right to uh, the only team that matters, Nebraska. Uh, they've got a and m and then a potential Houston matchup and then a potential Wisconsin Duke matchup. Do they see any of those three teams other than a and m in your mind? I think they've got a good matchup with a and m. I mean, I, I I do feel pretty good about that. I mean, both teams are are, are, are hot. They're both winning games down the stretch. a and m again, twenty and fourteen overall on the season and and have been playing well, but they don't shoot particularly well. We, we've mentioned how they rebound well. Um, part of offensive rebounding is is shooting below 40%. So I'm sure that helps them as well. Um, so I, I like Nebraska's matchup. I do think that they get, uh, you know, get a matchup with Houston. Um, possible, you know, Houston, not a high, high in scoring team ever, either uh, that you get the upset there. I think anybody's beatable in this tournament. I think that's part of the fun of, of this year of college basketball. There's nobody sitting high and mighty. Um, but I think at that point, you'd probably call me Homer if I picked him to win that one. I'll say this all together for Nebraska. This is a heck of a bracket. I mean, I know like in Nebraska, we're going to talk about the Texas A&M matchup. We're going to talk about getting the first NCAA tournament win of all time for this program. And that in and of itself, I don't care what happens after that. It's basically like making a final four for Nebraska. We can all kind of breathe that, you know, sigh of relief and, and then kind of focus on what it means to, to make an elite eight or a sweet 16 and all that. Not to be, not to say it can't be done here. It can, any team can get hot. Nebraska feels like, like they are hitting their stride. But you look at the South region and Houston, you, I mean, you mentioned it, Houston and Nebraska, Wisconsin and Duke, Texas Tech, Kentucky and Florida and Marquette. I mean, this is a pretty darn good uh, bracket. So I think it'll be it'll be it'll be kind of hard to to make a, a huge run. Um, but we already see them beat Wisconsin. So if it ends up being Wisconsin uh, is a possibility. Duke is not your vintage Duke team. That's why they're coming in with a, a four seed here. So, you know, some of the brand names that are there uh, are definitely you know, make your eyes get big, but this Nebraska team, as, as we talked about, it's, it's really, it's a dangerous team with its eight man rotation. If you get CJ Wilcher healthy, uh, and we already saw it, the, the nation's already fallen in love with Kase Tominaga. If he goes off, you know, you have a couple other guys playing well, they could make a bit of a run, but I would safely say, uh, without being a homer that I would probably say it would probably end with Houston. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? Might as well. I, I'm going to say they get to the Sweet 16. Mm. I, I just pick the upset. I'm going to pick the upset. I'm going to be the homer here. I, I, you asked me a question. Middle of February, early February last year, and I thought it was one of the best questions regarding Fred Hoiberg. Do I hope he can succeed here, or do I truly believe that he can succeed here? And I said, I truly believe that he can. And I believe that he's got the coaching acumen to match up with the best coaches in the country. I believe his offensive prowess is second to no one in the country. And the way this team plays defense with what Nate Lenzer has done with it, it's a team defense. There's a lot of really good defenders. There's no great defender there. You could say Juwan Gary kind of is close to great, exceptional, and he is the best of the bunch. But man, they've got a lot of really, really good defenders, and it is a team defense. It is not built to to not help to, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I like this mm -hmm. team. I like what they've got. I like the depth 
And if they are hitting shots, I think they can pull the upset. I think they could. I think they get by a And M. It'll probably be a pretty tight game. I think they pull away late. I think they pull the upset in the second round. Uh, call me all kinds of names. I don't care. Uh, I because I believe Fred can do it. I believe he's got a team that has the talent and the ability, and I think we've got the coaching staff to do it as well. Well, I mean, hey, and hey, look at Houston's losses this year. They obviously just lost to to Iowa State, and they scored forty one points. You know, so I mean, again, it's a number one seed. Um, you know, was the number one team coming into the weekend or whatever, and and just lost that game. That's kind of been the story all year long in their losses. 65 points in a loss to Kansas, 53 and another loss to Iowa State, 67 against Texas, you know, TCU. Nebraska can score. And so if their defense, like we also mentioned their defense, I mean, it would be an intriguing matchup. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to pick Houston to go a long way. Um, and, 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 and that's, that's fair. Kelvin Sampson, a heck of a coach. Absolutely. Remember him from back at his Oklahoma days when Nebraska used to play them and the old big, uh, big 12. I don't know if he was there for the big eight. I'd have to go back and look, but in any case, um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it while it is a number one seed, it doesn't feel like an immovable object. No, it really doesn't. And, um, that, that's, that's the thing though, when you, so by the way, they scored, what, what would you say? 41, 41. Yeah. Okay. Nebraska in their loss in the tournament scored 87. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I think that Nebraska has a legit shot uh, to get to the Sweet 16. I got to take care of business against Texas A&M, and then, man, all bets are off. Let's go to another team in that same exact set of brackets that we could see in the Sweet 16. That is Wisconsin. What do you think they do? Yeah, I mean, Wisconsin, is especially today, playing really well. Chucky Hepburn playing, um, obviously, some of his bas- best basketball um, tough to stop as, as Nebraska found out Terrence Shannon and him getting to the free throw line. He had a big three late. If you didn't watch uh, that big 10 championship game, that was a, that was a lot of fun. And in, in Illinois did end up uh, winning that one. Um, but they do have, I mean, with that, with that matchup, uh, likely Duke in the second round. And listen, I, you know, as we go through this, I want to say, I mean, you want to usually like who you're familiar with, right? And I'm very familiar with, uh, with Wisconsin, I think AJ Store uh, it could be a big part of, of a tournament run for them. But it's going to be hard for me, considering what the Big Ten's done to my own heart and to all the fans <laughs> in the last couple of years, to give them the benefit of the doubt because they just have not performed well. And so, Greg Gard, um, you know, I, I, I that twelve matchup against James Madison alone uh, could be a difficult one. That's a team that only lost three games all year round. I, I don't. Necessi- I think they're hot. I think they're playing well right now. <laughs> it's just those past couple of years that are going to start bothering me as far as I say long long term predictions. Um, so I don't I don't I don't think so. I think maybe uh second round for Wisconsin. I think they get upset. I think they're one of the 12 yeah. five upsets. Uh, James Madison is a solid team and and I, I like Wisconsin. I like what Greg Gard does. I think he could use Chucky Hepburn differently and it would benefit his team. I think Chucky Hepburn on Fred Hoiberg's roster would be really intriguing, um, but we'll see what happens in the offseason. Uh, but I, I don't. I think Wisconsin gets upset in the first round. Mm. Uh, let's go over to the East, and we'll start with ninth seeded Northwestern taking on eighth seeded Florida Florida Atlantic. UConn is their second round matchup. Should they get by the Owls? And then possibly San Diego State or Auburn. What do you think there, Bach? Well, Northwestern, obviously a good story. The last couple of years, um, Florida Atlantic, speaking of a good story, has, has done well in the tournament as of recently. Um, I don't know. I mean, and Northwestern didn't quite have the performance that maybe they'd want. Lost to Wisconsin in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, I, I think they're very, obviously, boo booey. You talk about guard play. Could do a lot. I think I'm going to say the same type of thing. Is I, I'd, I'd probably favor, favor them slightly over FAU, but you know, when it comes to UConn, uh, that that'll be difficult for him. So I, I, I like that team, but I don't like that roster as much as I like Nebraska's roster as, for, as an example, as a team that can get hot and, and get on a roll. Absolutely agree with you. I think they get by Florida Atlantic, uh, and then wind up losing to UConn in the second round, but still, I mean, just, I think it would be nice if you could get, uh, at least five of the six out of the first round. You got to remember three of them are eight or nine seats here too. Uh, So the other team from the Big Ten that is in the East is Illinois. They're a three seed. They play 14th seeded Moorhead State. Uh, Second round matchup for them is either BYU or Duquesne. And then if they get to the Sweet 16, they're looking at Washington State, Drake, Iowa State, South Dakota State. What do you think about Illinois 
fresh off a Big Ten tournament title. We'll have to see if they pack those officials with them and bring them along. (laughs) (laughs) Terrence Shannon gets all those free throws. Um, We've seen this before, too. I mean, I think of that Keegan Murray Iowa team that that won the tournament a couple of years ago. And I was I was like, man, this team's built. They're ready to roll. And then they lose in the first round. I think in a three fourteen matchup. I don't think that's what you see with Illinois. But the thing that bothers bothered me, and, and you'll see this with Illinois too. Sometimes they be, look like they're a little disinterested, or there's just something that, that goes on there. Like the, the I, I know there was pandemonium, and there was all these things that probably should have been called. But to allow Kase Tamanaga just to roll up and, and, and take that three unguarded um, in that game, it was just kind of like. They're looking around. They're looking at the refs. That can get you in a lot of trouble when you play uh, some of these higher end teams. Coleman Hawkins hasn't, you know, I don't think looked the, the best throughout this run. Obviously, Shannon has, um, and he could be a star. I mean, he's a top five scorer in in NCAA altogether. Uh, I like them to to get past Morehead State, and then they've got the winner of BYU and Duquesne. I like that too. So I think they're at least Sweet Sixteen bound. Um, I think Iowa State and Drake as the two ten seed would would move on there. Uh, I, potentially a matchup with Iowa State in the Sweet 16. I'll go as far as the lead eight for for, for Illinois. I think they're really? probably. <laughs> I, I I hesitate to do it because again, um, the team you know the teams that win the Big Ten tournament don't always go far in the NCAA tournament. But as far as like top end Big Ten teams, Purdue's going to be a popular pick. But Illinois is is, is got to be right there with them as far as you know this team can make a run. I, I I see the talent, but what I also saw from them, especially in the first half against Nebraska, if that's Nebraska's first game of the tournament, I think Nebraska wins by 20. Mm. So I, I, I'm i actually more concerned for Illinois with Moorhead State, I think, than that second round matchup against probably BYU. I don't think they get past Iowa State. Um, I like Iowa State going to the Sweet 16. And to be honest, I think Iowa State, UConn, uh, is going to be a a whale of a matchup. Well, fun if little, they both get there. Fun fact too about Brad Underwood. Not fun for Brad, but he's never made the Sweet Sixteen uh, either. You know, at either of his stops. So obviously, one year at Oklahoma State, but he's been at Illinois since 2017. Um, the fact that you know when they had Ayu uh and and the big man uh, whose name's escaping me right now, uh, but I mean they had they've had some really good teams. They were number one seed that year and didn't get it done. So betting on Brad Underwood's a risky bet for myself. So uh, that's why I hesitate to do it. But I, I just think Terrence Shannon um, and that roster, I mean, I, again, I think Coleman Hawkins can play a little bit uh, better. Uh, DeMarc is an all big 10 player. They, they've, they've got, they've got some pieces. Danger can go in there as far as a big man. Uh, and, and so they've got some matchup versatility there. But it's still Brad Underwood in the NCAA tournament, so I'm holding my breath. I don't know, man. Maybe I had to rethink that BYU game they face in the second <laughs> round. Now, I, I say he finally gets to a Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he goes any further than that, but uh, they will finally get there. Uh, now, taking a look at the West Regional, Michigan State is the fifth team that is in. They are a nine seed. They will play Mississippi State, the eight seed on the other side. Second round matchup with North Carolina. And then potential matchups with St. Mary's, Grand Canyon University, Bama, and the College of Charleston. Thoughts there? Well, it's interesting. As I just pulling up the team comparison, uh, very similar teams, Michigan State and Mississippi State. Uh, the net rank has Michigan State at 24th, uh, Mississippi State at 31st. Strengths of schedule, 10th for Sparty, 11th for the Bulldogs. And then their last 10 games, each of them are 5-5. Five and five. What I don't like about Michigan State, the record versus the top 25, uh, only 2-7. Uh, this is just a team that probably should have been a lot better than they they end up being. They I don't necessarily feel like they're on a hot streak right now. Um, so especially with North Carolina looming in the second round, um, I don't think that they that they make it to the Sweet 16. I, you know, I, I guess it doesn't matter how too much about whether they beat Mississippi State or not. But for their sake, you know, at least in in East Lansing, they 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 count Final Four appearances, not not a round of 32s. Um, so I mean, I. I guess I could give them the edge against Mississippi State. I'd have to look a little bit more into that matchup, but I don't see them going too far. I, I think they win the first round just because it's Tom Izzo and he always seems to find a way to That's get true. at least one. I think they put up a fight against North Carolina. Um, I, I I just genuinely think uh, he's, he's, I think he's a lot better coach than Hubert Davis. And I think they're going to give North Carolina fits, but in the end, I think they probably lose. Uh, by less than, by, by single digits at least. I think they may even keep it within five. But uh, Michigan State first round, just because it's Izzo, 
Uh, I don't know that that is a great matchup for him, but just because of Tom Isbo, Izzo and his prowess in March, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then the uh, the lone number one seed that the Big Ten had, the Purdue Boilermakers, the soon-to-be-named uh, college player of the year for the second straight year, Zach Eady. Uh, fun fact, Purdue has lost in the first round or third round in the last three years to double-digit seeds. Um, I still think they're too soft. I don't know that Purdue gets to the Sweet 16. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of a similar deal, deal, deal there with Matt Painter. Where he's got a long resume of good teams heading in the tournament and doesn't do well there. I think that they're, you know, I, I don't think they're, their bracket sets up as too difficult. That hasn't always really mattered because uh, they lose some of these games. But uh, the eight nine matchup there, Utah State and, and TCU. Look at their Sweet Sixteen matchup, Gonzaga, who's not the gun, not the namesake of what that is against McNeese, uh in the, in, in the five twelve, and then they'll face the winner of the four thirteen with Kansas and Samford. Kind of a similar deal there. I mean, I think the bottom half of that bracket's interesting. So I'll I'll go. I'll give them a lead eight. Um, and, and possibly a victory over Kansas there. No, nah, no, I won't. I'll go sweet 16 for him as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I got to stop taking chances on coaches that don't win in March. Yeah, up. I, I, I think they get upset by Kansas in the sweet 16. I really do. Um, I want to throw out one other team and then we're going to get to Tom Chattel from the Omaha world Herald three seed in that Midwest regional. Uh, and they are playing in Pittsburgh and that is the Creighton blue Jays. Uh, 23 and nine overall. They're the three seed against Akron, 24 and 10. I don't think that's a great matchup for Creighton, but I think Creighton may get on a bit of a run. Uh, that Tennessee game, if they both make it into the Sweet 16, that two three matchup could be a whale of a game. And I will predict right now, if they get by Tennessee, even if it is Purdue that they're playing, they will go to the Final Four. Wow! Wow, that's a big prediction. Uh, that bottom half of the, the 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 Midwest bracket is so fun uh, because you've got Texas uh, against a play-in winner and then the seven ten against Tennessee and St. Peter's. So you'll have the Rick Barnes matchup hopefully yep. in the second round. And what you've got in the second round for Creighton looming there is potentially Dana Altman in Oregon <laughs> as the eleven seed against the six seed uh, South Carolina. I love. Uh, the lack of, of tra the transparency that is there that a lot of this is just, you know, you're going to have 68 teams. You might as well have some fun with some of the matchups. Total coincidence. And the, yeah, there's no <laughs> coincidences. Uh, the, br the brackets are set up to have some fun, and I believe we will. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think Creighton's set up pretty well to go on a, on a pretty good run there. Um, at least Sweet 16. When, I, I think once you get to, um, you know, the Elite Eight talk, you're probably matching up with Tennessee there. And that'd be a heck of a game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'll, I'll go with you. I think Elite Eight. I won't quite go Final Four, um, but I'll have to fill out a bracket because I don't think I have anybody in the Final Four out of the Midwest then yet uh, nope. because I don't know if I want Kansas to go all that long. Uh, so a lot of this is just kind of filling it out and, and seeing. But Creighton, um, they've got they've got a team to make a run here as 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 evidenced by getting a three seed. Um, but it, it's just so wild. I mean, this. This NCAA, this uh, conference tournament, excuse me, exposed a lot of these teams as you know. If you can, you can feel as confident as you want with a lot of these one lines and and, and picks, but not a lot of those teams won the, the, their tournaments, and Creighton was one of them that didn't. They are, uh, but I still I think if they get by Tennessee in the Sweet Sixteen, I think they go to the Final Four. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to break. Tom Chattel from the Omaha World Herald will join us on the Allo VIP line when we return on ninety three seven The Ticket. Are you working in or looking to get into the electrical construction industry? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Hello? Hello? Believe it or not, old phones are one of the most common pain points in offices today. Many of these phones are beyond repair because parts aren't available to fix outdated devices. Whether it's a traditional phone system or cloud-based VOIP technology, Hamilton Business Phones can help upgrade your connection. We make it easy to sync your office phone with your cell for seamless call handling, no matter where you work. If your current office phone can't do this, you deserve better. Hire your local experts. Hire Hamilton at hamiltonisbusiness.com. Rain, snow, or shine, John Henry's is here to keep your home's plumbing systems working properly, no matter what kind of weather Nebraska throws at us. From unclogging toilets and drains to installing new water heaters and water treatment systems, John Henry's is your plumbing expert in the Lincoln and Omaha communities. 
visit us at calljh.com or call John Henry's. 45-55-55, John Henry's Plumbing. And electrical. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402 380 0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. People always ask, what are Jake and Sip like when they're off the air? Well, the answer probably won't surprise you. Hey, Jake, your Honda's looking a little dirty. Says the guy whose license plate is barely visible. I mean, do you even care about that thing anymore? It gets a little uncomfortable. Now, that's when I jump in. Hey, whoa, Mark, did you get a new car? Nope, just took my car down to Nebraska Auto Detail. Joe and the staff made the outside and the inside look amazing. Maybe you guys need to go. Okay, wise guy. Settle down, Jake. Book your appointment today at NebraskaAutoDetail.com. Liberty Law Group is committed to the pursuit of justice for those that have been injured. My name is Eric Hagan, attorney with Liberty Law Group. If you've been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, call 877-42-LIBERTY. Our detail-oriented trial attorneys are committed to the highest quality legal representation. At Liberty Law Group, we will fight for you. Call 877-42-LIBERTY. Once again, that's 877-42-LIBERTY. Oh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Southeast Community College invites you to check out our spaces ahead of your official campus visit. Our virtual campus tours let you see our campuses and learn more about our programs of study. Then you can schedule your individual visit in person or virtually. Virtual tours of our campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, or Milford and our learning centers are online at southeast.edu slash visit SCC. SCC, your path to possible. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course, they have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at the chocolate season, 40th and Old Ginny, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. Tomonaga was hot for the Huskers. He had 30 points in the ball game. They are, I'm just, you know, they are a lock for the tournament. They are Ooh. in. They are a lock. Write it down. Nothing could take away Nebraska. Where do you have them at? Well, I, I'm curious if Philatology and Jake are on the same page. I'd say eight to nine seed right now. I don't think they're the ten. I say an eight. Okay. I say an eight the same seed page. right they're now. Eight to nine. That's seed. right. I see them as an eight. Early break with Sip and Jake from six to eight every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. This is Sunday Rewind on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to Husker Rewind here on 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. I'm Mike Melby, Jake Bachoban sitting in for Tom Stevens, who was up in Minneapolis at the Big Ten Tournament. Breaking news, Casey Tominaga named to the All-Big Ten Tournament team. So let's talk about that. Nebraska being an eight seed and Trev Alberts with none other than the legendary columnist for the Omaha World Herald and Husker Extra, Mr. Tom Chattel, joining us on the Allo VIP line. Tom, how are you on this selection Sunday? Well, it's it's, a, it's been a lot of fun. 
It truly has been. So um, let's just start off with, with the tournament itself, Nebraska basketball. They're in. They have a matchup against Texas A&M, then potentially Houston in the second round. What are your thoughts on the, the matchup right there? Well, uh, I'd like to see Trent Alberts come out and uh, throw out the first ball. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he'll, he'll, he'll launch for the, uh, the opening tip. You know, the, the committee doesn't really care about Trent Alberts. They did, despite what people think, they didn't do this on purpose. They weren't, you know, trying to, you know, crack a joke or anything. It's just, it's just funny how this worked out. I thought actually A&M was going to come to Omaha. So, um, you know, Trent won't have to face the people in Nebraska, but you have to face some fans there. Certainly, um, it's just it's just one of those ironies. Uh, every once in a while, you get this tournament, and uh, you know it'll it'll be one of those games. Um, you know, eight nine is is uh, a couple of equals. You know, generally in the eyes of the committee, so uh, they're going to have to play well. But uh, you know, and ms hot, but they haven't been they haven't been great. So um, you know, we'll see what happens. That we will. One of the quotes I saw from Rink Mast is, uh, "We're not playing their athletic director. We're playing the men's basketball team." So it's pretty obvious that the the uh, the, the team doesn't really care one way or the other about who the athletic directors are or what has transpired. But I, I love that quote by Rink. Um, I thought you wrote a fantastic article. Um, just kind of moving on. I mean, we we all went through it on Wednesday. Trev's out. Uh, all kinds of speculation for sure as to why and what happened and this, that, and the other thing. Bottom line, you went, hey, you know what? Let's move on. And here's two names we really need to look at. Uh, and I thought they were two fantastic names. Uh, Jamie Pollard at Iowa State and Garth Glissman, who is the basically the assistant commissioner for uh, men's basketball in the SEC. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah, I uh, hey, look. They're, you know, they're they're going to find a good athletic director, and um, it's it's just you know it's it, the the shock of the thing, and people were upset, and they're still upset. But you know, Trev is not the only good athletic director out there. They're going to find somebody, um, and and they're they're going to be stabilized. And uh, you know, Matt Rule's going to like him. He, you know, Matt Rule, I think. Can, can work with anybody who's competent, and they'll so get to find a competent guy. You know, I guess my question is, who's gonna who's gonna hire the AD right now? Is it is it gonna be Chris Kaborik, or are they gonna wait till there's a precedent? Uh, generally, you'd, you'd like to have a president who's gonna be there, um, but that may not be the case. I don't know how long that's gonna take. So, um, I just. You know, but the whole thing is uh, about there being issues of leadership and the regents is, is all overdone. Um, Trev did not have a problem w with Governor Pillins, all these things about, uh, you know, the, the politics and, and, you know, the governor cutting costs, the university, and, and all this that Trev is running from that. I just don't believe it. I, I, don't, I don't think it's true. Um, I mean, and, uh, the, the regents gave Trev anything he wanted. So, I mean, for leadership, I mean, he's the leader. <laughs> he, he's the most powerful man in Lincoln. So, you know, what do they need? So, uh, I, I don't think, um, I really think what he needed was a little little bit of more on his resume to, to, to maybe chase jobs that are that are out there someday. But, um, um, the whole thing was just shocking. But, but they're going to get somebody good. But there's a couple, I, you know, I, Jamie Powers is as good as anybody in the country. Uh, I don't know if he's interested. I think he was a few years ago. Um, but, um, yeah, again, Nebraska's in the Big Ten. And if you're an AD, you, you, you want to be in one of the one of those two leagues right now. So um, I think, it'll, I, I think it'll, be, it'll be very attractive. Yeah, Tom, uh, Jake Bachman here. And I wanted to ask you, too, because we were kind of going through the list of, of reasons why Trev didn't leave. Uh, what are some of the primary reasons you think he did? It's obviously probably not all one thing, uh, but what do you think uh, led Trev to, to taking that job at AM? Yeah, I mean, I, we're all discussing, but, you know, again, I, I don't think he had problems with anybody uh, like, you know, the – the presidential search is not more that is not longer, not taking longer than, than it did to find Ted Carter. So it's not like 
it, I mean, it takes a while because like I, I kind of forgot about it until Trev left. Um, and yeah, the Regents gave him everything he wanted. I, I, what I'm hearing is that they have kind of pushed back a little bit on Trev on the stadium um, expansion project, you know, saying it was probably going to cost too much. Um, you know, let's, let's slow down a little bit on this. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if, if uh, that's what he wanted to hear. But, um, yeah, and I don't think it was the lawsuit. I think that's the thing where um, it, it's not why he leave. I mean, it, it, it's going to follow him there. But I, I think what Nebraska would, would probably like to do is, is just make that go away somehow. So um, I honestly think um, you know, when he was at UNO, he did not – he had chances to leave and did not. He was not chasing jobs. Um, but maybe being at Nebraska has kind of, you know, maybe uh, sparked his ambition a little bit. Um, you know, you hear he wanted he went after the the Big Ten commissioner's uh, job. He you know, had interest in maybe a college football playoff job. So, um, it's, you know, to get those, you know, maybe maybe you need to be uh, in the SEC and the Big Ten. So. Um, yeah, I'm 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 just speculating here. I don't I don't know that for a fact, but um, I I, I kind of lean more on um, that angle than that, that things were uh, that, that that there was a mess here. Um, I mean, if he thinks there were, if he thinks there were issues in Nebraska, we only go to A and M exactly. <laughs> and I hope he called Bill Byrne to ask him. He probably didn't. Um, but those people down there. Um, they don't only get involved; they they run the show. So, uh, yeah, he's in for a shock if he doesn't if he doesn't ready for that. Okay, three other names I want to throw out. Um, one current interim AD Dennis LeBlanc. Two, Alabama AD Greg Byrne, whose father obviously was Bill Byrne, and yeah. former Husker All American. Best center trophy in the world is named after him, Dave Remington. Yeah. Um, well, Dennis LeBlanc is going to do a great job as an intern. I don't think he would be uh, the guy you would hire. I uh, just, I mean, you, you, they need to get somebody who's been an athletic director. It's, we're at a place now where um, college athletics is, is really changing fast. And, you know, it's, it, you don't want somebody who's who's going who's gonna to be learning on the job. So uh, I think Dennis LeBlanc is a perfect place for him right now. The, the spotlight's shining on him, and he, he's going to he, he's going to get his due for everything he's ever done, and he, he gets to uh, contribute in a big way. Um, who was the second name? Uh, Greg Byrne. Yeah. Uh, Any chance? No, he's not. He's not leaving Alabama for Nebraska. No, okay. no, no, no. I he's, thought uh, I'd ask. He's one of the most powerful guys already. Now, you, you know, he's, um, you know, it, just because his dad was here, no, he's he's not coming here. But um, Remington, I mean, he's, he's come up before. Um, he's certainly a guy that has, you know, run businesses and, and then, you know, he knows football, he knows Nebraska. And I kind of think that ship sailed a little bit. Um, I don't think it'd be, uh, the, the the name Garth Glissman is, is, intrigues me because he's he's on his way up and he's um, he's certainly been around um, uh, big time sports organizations. <coughs> Excuse me, he knows Nebraska. Um, I, I don't think it would take him long to get up and running um, on this job, uh, and a lot of this is, is you got you got to raise money, right? You got to you got to raise money. You got to be dealing with NIL and um, and those things. So, um, and you got to hire, hire you got to hire good coaches. So, uh, Jamie Powers done all that stuff. That's why I I, I went with him. Well, it's interesting too. I think you know when you look at the type of athletic directors because even you look at the the, the different ones with Icorus and Moose and, and 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 now Trev Alberts is you know there's a different there's a different route of going about it. And Alberts was a very visible athletic director. Do you think they need to try to find somebody that is going to be there with Matt Rule and and and, and Dylan Raiola and basically just at baseball games and basketball games 
Uh, do you think it's going to be very important in, in with what they're looking for and with the backlash with Trev leaving of finding a guy that's going to be visible? Be, or do you think they could find somebody that's that's kind of likes to get to the work behind the scenes? Well, I don't, I don't think visible is as important as just being a, a people person. Um, you know, being able to work with people. They don't need somebody to be a, a celebrity. They just need they need somebody who's who's good at running an athletic department and and knows how to raise money. You know, you don't want somebody that's going to go to a booster meeting or a function and and, and stand on the, stand on the corner in the back of the room. You know, I mean, you need somebody that's going to know everybody and is is going to be able to uh, make relationships. Um, so somebody. Who 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 uh, who can, can work a room like Matt Rule? Maybe while Rules work on one side of the room, the ADs work on the other side. You know, you go hand in hand. So, um, yeah, I think that that, that would be important. Tom Chattel from the Omaha World Herald joining us on the Allo VIP line. Uh, Tom, in the dance, there's six Big Ten teams that are playing. Which two do you think advance the farthest? And how far do you think Creighton goes? Um, you mean I'm, I'm sorry. The, the, the first, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I, 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 I didn't mean to not listen to the first part of your question. I, 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 somebody's talking to me about travel. I'm sorry. No, no it's uh, all good. It's all good. Repeat it again for me, please. We, the Big Ten has six teams in the yeah. NCAA tourney. Which two go the yeah. furthest in the tournament? Oh, I'll say Illinois, and um, you know, maybe Wisconsin. I, I well, you know, I, I, I'll go with, with the uh, the Boilermakers. You know, one of these times it's going to be their turn. So you know, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to get to the Final Four. I, I mean, you got Tennessee down there, but mainly you've got Creighton. I think Creighton, if they hit the shots, can beat Tennessee. And Purdue. Now, I'm not calling for Creighton to go to the Final Four because they've got, they they don't have a lot of depth and they're going to have to hit a lot of shots. But they certainly have that, that kind of team. They're they can beat either one of those teams. So, that, but now can they go do it? I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go with with the top two. Okay, fair enough. Before we let you go, I want to get your thoughts. Spring balls just around the corner. Uh, what to you is the most intriguing? storyline that is going to be on the field um yeah i think it's uh it's going to be leadership I, I think we talked about this uh maybe last week um yep. leadership who, who are the leaders you know, this is the time the time of year to find out who's, who's going to run the show this is the year two everybody knows what to do so who's going to stand out and Who's going to make sure everybody does what, what they're supposed to do? Um, I think Dylan Rayola, how fast he, um, you know, becomes comfortable with the offense uh, with, with the new quarterback coach, uh, and 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 you know what kind of leadership he shows. And I, I think they need to find a running game. I really think the best way to help uh, Dylan Rayola is with an offensive line and a, and a good running game that can. He doesn't have to do everything. So, um, and I think it's, it's time to have a good running game in this conference. It's, it's, uh, if you want to get to a bowl game and win games, um, uh, you got to be able to do that. And so, uh, they, they're going to have some options, uh, in the, in the backfield. Uh, so let's identify a couple of them, um, you know, this spring. All righty. Tom Chattel, thank you so much for your time. And we will talk to you sometime in the future. Before I let you go, I do want to let you know that Isaac and Lincoln off the Sarger Hammond text line is voting for you for AD. Uh, well, I, I like this. I like to know that how, I, I'm, I'm an AD in my column. That's about as far as it goes. Uh, <laughs> and an I, excellent I, I one at that. To, I always tell them what to do, but uh, if I actually had to do it, I'd probably pass out. So uh, I probably wouldn't work. <laughs> All right. Tom, thanks, thanks for guys. your time. Have a great week. Tom Chattel from the Omaha World, Harold, joining us on the Allo VIP line. Let's take a quick last break, get into the final segment of Husker Rewind here on 93.7 The Ticket. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They can get you into a new vehicle right now and get your 2024 started off the right way. 
They cleared off their 2023 inventory and have tons of new vehicles to choose from to make sure you get to where you need to be this year. Out with the old and in with the new. Stop by Mullen Motors today, just north of 48th and Layton in Lincoln. No tagline, just quality vehicles. Mullen Motors. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Problem gambling affects millions of Americans daily, of all ages and walks of life. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. Hi, everyone. Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. The last few years have been wild, but we've been here for you through all the ups and downs, and we'll be here for you when you need us the most. For all your travels and for your day-to-day -day driving. With winter conditions causing problems all over town, the last thing anyone needs this year is constant car troubles. Let us help you drive in peace and make sure you drive to work and to winter destinations safe. A1 Automotive, Leviton and L Street downtown, always honest answers. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Treads Central Tire Pros, just south of Cortland on Highway 77, or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Treads Central Tire Pros, because we tread differently. 24-7 threat monitoring, expert tech support, streamlined communications. Allo has a solution for that. Protect your business with Allo Business. Comprehensive firewall security, Microsoft Teams voice integrated communications, cybersecurity and IT support managed by experts. From productivity to peace of mind, Allo has a solution for that. Allo means business. Protect your business by visiting allofiber.com forward slash business. Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash Southeast Nebraska. Imagine a healthier, more active, physically fit version of yourself. If you've been putting off getting into shape, now is the time with the Ferrell's Extreme Body Shaping 10-Week Challenge. Our program combines kickboxing, strength training, and nutrition coaching to help you achieve your fitness goals. And ticket listeners, you can get $150 off the enrollment fee. The next challenge begins on March 23rd. You can get all the info at fxblincoln.com. Don't wait any longer. Ferrell's Extreme Body Shaping at 40th and Yankee Hill and 70th and Vine. Liberty Law Group is committed to the pursuit of justice for those that have been injured. My name is Eric Hagan, attorney with Liberty Law Group. If you've been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, call 877-42-LIBERTY. Our detail-oriented trial attorneys are committed to the highest quality legal representation. At Liberty Law Group, we will fight for you. Call 877-42-LIBERTY. Once again, that's 877-42-LIBERTY. 
be a memory for your grandchildren. Among Nebraska adults age 65 or older, 47% report current alcohol use. Drinking too much can cause harm to children, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, you will still be around for your grandchildren. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. This is Sunday Rewind on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to Husker Rewind here on 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. I'm Mike Belby, Jake Bachoven sitting in for Tom Stevens. Big thanks to Tom Chattel joining us from the Omaha World Herald. We had Nick Center in studio. We had Austin Norman on the Allo, or on the uh, Sutter Heyman stream, as well as Eric Strickland. Selection Sunday, Nebraska's an eight seed. They're going to Memphis. They take on Texas A&M. Houston is a potential second round opponent for the Huskers women's team. Selection show starts in about six minutes. Time now for the Friedman Law Injury Report. If you're ever seriously injured in a crash or at work, call Friedman Law at 402 476 1093. The Husker men's basketball team is going to play the first NCAA tournament game in 10 years with Eli Rice and Blaze Cato both day to day. CJ Wilcher is expected to play after missing the Huskers Big Ten tournament semifinal game. With an illness, Josiah Alec expected to be able to be close to 100%, if not 100% after banging knees with Terrence Shannon on Saturday. Husker women's team is going to head into the NCAA tournament. Expected to be an eight seed. They'll be without Allison Widener. She's out for the season with an ACL tear. Baseball team, second baseman Caden Brumbaugh out defensively for the next six weeks with an arm injury. He will still be able to hit as a DH. And Jordy Ball out for the softball team. That is the Friedman Law Injury Report. Here on Husker Rewind, Jake. Thank you so much for jumping in. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward to uh, to working with you every time we get a chance, man. Yeah, always a great great show. day to do it. Yeah, uh, it was too. <laughs> and big shout out to you off the Sarter Heyman text line, as uh, as uh, too ripped to quit said, Bach is brilliant on basketball, and I concur. Uh, fellow Southeast Knight said that. So hey, there we go. Props yeah. off the text line. <laughs> Flipping it is up next here on 93.7 The Ticket, and then get your happy on with Ricky Simmons. I'm Mike Melby. That's Jake Bachhoven. Talk to you next week. See ya. Hi, it's Tom and Mike from Husker Rewind. And did you know that people who are represented by an attorney are often compensated up to three times more than someone who is not? Friedman Law has been helping injured people for over 60 years. It's all they do. If you're ever seriously injured in an accident, call Friedman Law at 402-476-1093. Friedman Law is a family firm that works hard for Nebraska families just like yours. So if you're ever injured on the job or in a crash, contact Friedman Law at FriedmanLaw.com. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters.